Hey, what's up, folks? Welcome back to another video on Made with SwiftUI. If you played around with SwiftUI a bit like me, you have noticed that there's something missing from it. I mean, there are a lot of stuff missing, but something that is really important is the activity indicator. Now, of course, you can go and import the activity indicator from UIKit to SwiftUI. However, I would like to challenge SwiftUI further and build a whole app just using SwiftUI. So I decided to go and build my own uh, activity indicator. And in this video, that's what we're gonna go through and see how we can go and create our own loading or activity indicator, however you wanna call it, spinner, up to you. And it's gonna have like nice animations and it's also gonna change colors. Actually, let me just show you how it's gonna look like. So this is the sample one that I created and that's uh, the one that we're gonna uh, go through on, on this video how to build. And as you can see, it's just the spinner that once it finished spinning, it keeps repeating and changes uh, different colors. Um, it's pretty simple to implement using SwiftUI. So without further ado, let's just jump into the implementation. All right, so I've created a brand new SwiftUI project. So using Xcode Beta 3 in this uh, video. So just go ahead, create a new project, call it whatever you want. And we're not gonna need the previews in this case. So even if you're in Mojave, that's great. We don't, we're not gonna need them due to the fact that this actually animates and uh, the previews do not consider those animations. You will have to run it on a simulator or in a real device. All right. So looking from our simulator, um, we will have to go and introduce a new shape. SwiftUI already comes with uh, some shapes like circle, capsule, rectangles, rounded rectangles, and some more. So in this case, we're gonna go and create our own shape, which we're gonna call a ring. So we're gonna go and create this ring that actually fills a whole circle. So the path is gonna go from one angle to towards the 360 degrees. So let's go and create our struct called ring. And this ring is a type of shape. So we're gonna inherit of shape. The reason we want to inherit from a shape is first to conform to the path. So we're gonna return the path of the shape. And also shape conforms to animatable, which gives us an animated data. What that means is like, there's a property in our shape that is actually gonna be animated. And by telling, we telling SwiftUI which property is this, then it goes and does some optimizations and makes this property animatable. All right, first of all, we would like to know, we would like to have a property in our ring that's gonna tell us how much of the ring is actually filled. So when it's of value one, it's 100% filled and value zero is 0% filled and 0.5 is 50% filled and so on. So let's go and create this property var and I will call it a fill point, which is gonna be a double. All right, that will indicate how much of our ring is filled. And to conform to the shape protocol, we will need to call the path in rect. So this path in rect will actually return some kind of path. In our case, it's gonna be the arch, basically the circle and the progress so far of this circle. So this path actually has a start. So I'm gonna call var start, and that will equal to zero. And also it's gonna have an end. So let end equals, and the end is gonna be uh, basically the fill point multiplied by 360. So how much of our circle is actually right now filled? So this is gonna be 360 times our fill point. All right, the reason that our, our, var, uh, our start is a var is because the start is actually gonna change later on. But for now, let's keep it simple and uh, see where it, it goes. All right, so now we need to create a path. So let path equals path. And then we say path dot add arc. And we're gonna use uh, this one with a center, radius, start angle, end angle, and clockwise. So the center 
we want it to be in the center of whichever view calls it. So to do that, we say this is a CG point of uh, uh, X and Y, and for that we will use the rect dot size dot width divided by two, and the same for the Y is the rect dot size dot height divided by two. That will place it in the middle of our view. Next, we would like a radius. The radius is gonna be uh, half of the width rect. So rect size dot width divided by two. And the start angle is gonna be dot degrees and the degrees is gonna be the start that we set. And the end angle is gonna be with the end that we created. So end. And this is gonna be counterclockwise going on. So clockwise goes to false. And our path is a var in here. All right. And we need to say that this is a double. All right. And then we simply return our path. Great, now that we returned our path, uh, we have conformed to the shape protocol. However, since we want to animate uh, the uh, fill point, we will just need to call animatable data um, of double. And in this one, we will need to have a getter and a setter. So the getter is uh, the fill point. And the setter will get the fill point equals new value. So like this, we animate basically the fill point. All right, that is for now what we're gonna use from the ring. We're gonna come back to it and iterate on it later on. However, let's go and actually call the ring in our content view. So content view will have a ring and with a fill point. Now the fill point is gonna be a state that we're gonna uh, hold on. So we can call state private var of a fill point and that is gonna be 0.0, .0 at the beginning. And that fill point uh, is gonna be passed into our ring. And we also would like to give a stroke with a line width, um, this one. So stroke, I will say for now color.red and the line width is gonna be, uh, let's call it 10. And let's give it a frame as well. So 100, 100, and not alignment. All right. Right now we have a ring with a 100, 100 frame. It's gonna be centered in our uh, content view. However, once this appears, we would like to fill up the point from zero to go to one. And for that, we'll go with animation. So we want to animate the fill point change. And we'll say self.fillPoint equals one. So when the view appears, the fill point will actually go from zero to one and that will change with an animation. However, in SwiftUI, by default, uh, we, when you say with animation, it uses a basic animation and that runs just once. And in this case, we would like to constantly repeat until we actually want to stop it. So for that, we will go and create a property uh, called animation. So private var, animation and that is an animation so and this will return a basic animation so you can say dot basic um, you can give it a duration um, for now i'll call 0 0.8 is the one that i really like the curve we're gonna leave the is in is out is in out um, which goes by default and this animation actually <coughs> is an animation here and this will repeat forever with auto reverse to false. All right, so that means that once the animation is finished, it will keep repeating itself. That means that the fill point will go from zero to one, zero to one after uh, the animation is finished. And we just, when you say with animation, you can just simply pass the animation that we just created in here. That's self dot animation and with all that, let's go and see what we actually created. So I'm gonna run on the simulator and we're gonna see what we created currently. All right. Okay, so as you can see, it starts from 
the right side, which is the zero degrees, and it fills up to uh, 100% and then it repeats itself. However, I would like it right now to go and make uh, some calculation. Once the ring is halfly filled, then I would like where it started to uh, be going forward and the end is going to be continuing until the end and the start will be following it, like we have in the previous example. So in this one you will see that once it's halfly filled, the start is actually following the end. So to do that is very simple. In our, back in our ring, you will have to add a delay. So that's also can, actually can be private. And you can call this a delay uh, point. And that delay point is going to be 0 0.5. So once it's halfly filled to 0 0.5, uh, this is a var. So once is once is a halfly filled, I would like to start changing the start of uh, our ring to be following uh, the fill point. And since now we have a delay point, in here we would leave uh, the var of double and we will say if the fill point that, that is currently filled is bigger than the delay amount, the, the delay point, then we want to start changing the start. And the start position will be twice the fill point and then we have to multiply it by 360 to follow uh, the whole circle. So two times the fill point, and we need to add it in parentheses, and that will be multiplied by 360. Otherwise, if the fill point is less than halfly filled, then we want the start to be the zero point, the, on the right side. All right, now I'm gonna increase a bit the duration actually in here to two, three seconds, just so we can go and see the result better. And it doesn't like that this is private right now, so I'm just gonna put it public. All right, so let's go and see. Right now it fills, and once, as you can see, once it fills halfly of the ring, it starts changing the start position to follow until the end. And basically right now we went and we created our spinner. So if I add a more appropriate duration like 0 0.8, it will constantly spin uh, like, like I have on the previous example. That's pretty cool. However, let's go and challenge this a bit and add some color. So once the ring is filled once, let's go and change the color uh, to a different color. So for that we will have like uh, a very, uh, an array of colors that we would like to change. So that's gonna be an array actually of color. And for now I'm gonna return red, green, blue and yellow. All right. So how would we know uh, when to change? Well, we will need to have a timer that will run the same time as our duration. So in this case, 0 0.8. And that means that once the animation is done, go and uh, change the color. So we will have to hold an index of which color we are currently in. So we will need to hold the state of the color where uh, color index and we will start with zero so that is gonna be the first color which is red and that state will be changed from a timer so let's go and create basically this timer so this is a timer and the timer is a timer dot scheduled timer with interval of I want to say 0 0.8 so in this case I'll say let uh, duration equals 0 0.8 and I'm gonna be passing the duration here because I would like them to be synced. So this is the duration. Repeat is true because we would like to keep repeating and then we don't need the timer inside our block. So what this will do, it will check if our next color index uh, is not bigger than the amount of colors that we have. 
uh, if it is bigger than the amount of cores that we have, it resets it to zero, otherwise it, uh, it gives it plus one. So if our color index plus one is bigger or equal to our uh, colors dot count, and I think I need to use self in everything in here. So self, then co uh, self dot color index equals zero. Else we say self dot color index plus equal to one. We're gonna increase uh, by one. And when we pass the stroke in here to um, color red, we just say colors at uh, color index. And since we do here with animation, underscore equals timer, self the timer. So that will actually start firing the timer. So let's go and see how this looks like. So it goes from red to green to blue to yellow and then to red to green to blue to yellow again. Um, so yeah, basically that is it. And you can, with a bit more extraction, you can extract all this code into its own component, called it uh, indicator, activity indicator, or whatever you want to call it. Um, don't forget that the stroke in here can be anything that uh, conforms to a shape style, <laughs> such as gradients and colors. So yes, you can pass like an angular uh, gradient or linear gradient up to you, or if you can pass just static colors in there, you can make your activity indicators look a bit better. And yeah, you can extract this to a different component and then you can use it throughout your SwiftUI code base. And of course, you can go and challenge yourself. You can go and build uh, a different one. Um, this is just an example of how you create and animate your own activity indicator um, if you would like a simple one like this one. So thank you so much for watching. If you like this video don't forget to like and subscribe for more videos like this and let me know in the comment section below what else would you like to see regarding SwiftUI. Is there anything more that you would like to be explained? I know that right now there's not many Apple documentation on what is going on in SwiftUI, so we have to figure everything out ourselves and this is not very straightforward. Uh, there are a lot of challenges in it. So just let me know in the comment section below how could I help you. And thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you folks in the next one.